Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where you will notice that I am back from my holiday. Very nice it was too, on the north coast of Cornwall, for those of you who know it, little village called St Agnes. It is a paradise on earth. Um, although yesterday I did get stung on the foot by a very unpleasant weaver fish, which I do not recommend because it really hurts. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm back home. And in fact, today, believe it or not, is the fifth anniversary of our first ever Sudoku video on the channel. I don't advise revisiting some of those early videos. They were, <laughs> our style was a little bit different. I do think we've improved over the years. Um, but yeah, what, what a five years it's been. We have managed to reach... Um, well, 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, as some of you will know already, it is an absolute privilege. Thank you so much to all those of you who've joined us on this journey. We are really grateful. Um, and onwards and upwards, what have we got for you today? Well, another superb Sudoku, I'm assured. This is called Antithesis, and it's by Agent, and it has a 100% rating on Logic Masters Germany and all the plaudits in the world. Uh, I've read the rules. Uh, before I came on air, and it seems to be some sort of yin-yang hybrid. But the eagle-eyed among you will note that some of these cages in the grid have negative numbers, negative totals in them. Minus 34, minus 4, minus 23. What is going on? Well, all will be revealed momentarily. There's even a zero cage there. Um, but yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Um, a few things to mention first. What do I need to say? Well, actually, I'm going to start with a huge thank you from me to Boo Boo. Now, Boo Boo, uh, you're one of the channel's biggest supporters, one of Mark and my biggest supporters. Thank you so much. You know why. Absolutely blown over. Um, so, Boo Boo, thank you. Um, next birthday announcements. I can get back on those, can't I? Now I'm off my holidays and I have access to a proper diary again. Um, Bob, I think you turned 43 yesterday. Your friend Chris told us about that. So I hope you had a brilliant birthday with lots of cake. Um, and also Andreas, you turned 32. I'm not sure on the day you turned 32. I know it was while I was on holiday. It might be quite recent actually. And your girlfriend Connie, um, told us this. So again, I hope you've had a brilliant birthday um, with the resplendent uh, amount of icing on your cake. Um, other than that, the only other thing to mention is that because we've uh, reached 500,000 subscribers, we are going to be releasing this free app. It is very close to being completed. I've just finished hinting um, a shy classic, which is uh, one of the puzzles in the pack. And, and it's an absolutely extraordinary puzzle. Um, yeah, the pack is full. Of puzzles that are extraordinary from people like Zetamath, Fistamafel, Kodet, ah, Clover, Mr. Menace. Um, yeah, it's it's really going to be absolutely um, wonderful and we're looking forward to the feedback already. Um, so look out for it any moment now. Um, now, all that said and done, let's get on with Antithesis and I shall read you the rules of this one. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Shade some cells in the grid such that all shaded cells are connected orthogonally and all unshaded cells are connected orthogonally. Let's just pause there because some people have trouble with the word orthogonally. It's a very long word with a lot of syllables in it, but it means something incredibly simple. Two cells are connected orthogonally if they share an edge. So those two cells are connected orthogonally. These two are not. So basically we have to partition this grid into two great lumps. Um, and make sure that everything's connected orthogonally. So what we couldn't do, for example, is to do something like this, shading the, let's make this really silly. We couldn't do that and then that as a connection and have the rest of the cells, I don't know, green or unshaded. And that's because this cell is not orthogonally connected to all the other gray cells. So hopefully that is clear. Oh, confirm restart, wow. OK, so Sven, I know Sven has been doing a lot of work on the software recently and there's been a big update. So um, do, yeah, do keep an eye on what Sven has been adding to the interface that we use every day on the channel. And do support Sven if you get a chance by Sudoku Pad. It's marvellous and it lets you play uh, your own classic Sudokus or those that you found in the newspapers in our software, which is definitely worth having. Um, anyway, sorry, where were we? No two by two area 
may be fully shaded or fully unshaded. So that great example I just did was total nonsense. So in this zero cage here, it's not possible that all of those cells are shaded or all of them are unshaded because that will break this no two by two area rule. Um, digits in cages cannot repeat and must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Um, however, shaded cells are treated as negative. In other words, the cage total is the sum of the unshaded cells minus the sum of the shaded cells. So this is how we're getting to negative total. So in this cage here, which is a minus 20 cage. Now, which way round is it? The shaded cells have to sum up. Well, I suppose it could all be shaded and sum to minus 20 or some of them could be shaded. It would have to be at least three of them, wouldn't it? So let's say those three were shaded and that one was unshaded. Let's just think about how this works. So if that was a low digit, if this was a one, these cells I think would have to sum to 21. So that overall, the, shade, the unshaded cell, which is this one I'm saying, minus the shaded cells was equal to minus 20. That is as clear as mud, but hopefully, um, hopefully it was clear enough that you'll be able to have a go at the puzzle. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we should start this weird sounding puzzle. Now, I don't know whether I should be talking about yin yang trickery first, because there are some secrets to yin yang and they are not related to the secret of Sudoku. They are related to the special form of logic problem that is yin yang. Let's talk about that just for a moment. Um, this business about needing things to be orthogonal, orthogonally connected yields a, an interesting conclusion about checkerboard arrangements. You can never have a checkerboard in a two by two in a yin yang puzzle. And that's because of the requirement that we orthogonally connect cells of, of the same color. So imagine we tried to connect these grays together. It does not matter how we do it, whether we go along the bottom of the grid or around the side of the grid. However we do it, let's go this way. Hopefully it's clear that this green cell now is isolated from this green cell. So in connecting the greys, we've isolated a green. And if we connected the greys this way round, we would have had exactly, oh, hang on, I'm making a mess of this. We'd have had exactly the same problem. Maverick, as punctual as ever, has taken off from the local aerodrome. Well done, Maverick. How I've missed you. It reminds me of that, uh, what's the Tom Lehrer song? Poll tax, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old poll tax. That's, I want to go back to Dixie, isn't it? I want to be a Dixie pixie. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, yes, so it doesn't work this way around either. So no checkerboards. Now, the interesting thing about this is, well, it's a sort of corollary of this, is that the perimeter of any yin yang puzzle has an interesting property. And the property is that it can only be divided into two segments. So if, if for example, we worked out that those cells were green and these two cells were gray, the question would, could, could be, okay, what's this cell or what's this cell or what's this cell? And the answer is always gray because if we try and put green in any of these other positions along the perimeter, what will happen when we connect the green to the rest of the green. However we do it, we will always isolate a gray from a gray. So once you get this sort of pattern emerging, you can always just do this. So remember, there's got to be two sort of contiguous regions of color in the perimeter only, otherwise you've broken it. And they're my two secrets of yin yang. There may be other secrets of yin yang. Let me just mull on that for a moment. Um, and fail, I think, to come up with anything else. So I think just remember those two things if you've not done a yin yang puzzle before and they will probably help you. So now let's actually try and do some of this Sudoku. We've got a massive region there, minus 34, which yeah, a, thir a minus 34 has got to be at least a five cell sum. It's got to have at least five uh, what are they? At least five shaded cells in this six cell region. Ah, ah, right. Okay. So now I've understood. 
Ah, uh, that's this is very clever already. The reason I say it's got to have at least five unshaded cells is that no, at least five shaded cells. I've just got it wrong again. I'm going to keep getting this wrong because it's very hard, at least for me, to keep track of what I'm what it is I'm trying to say. But it's got to have at least five shaded cells because even if I max out those shaded cells with the numbers five, six, seven, eight, and nine, they would add up to 35 only. And if, well, if we only had four, sh un four, if we only had four shaded cells, six, seven, eight, nine is only 30. That would be minus 30 as a maximum. So we've got to have five. But what I've just seen here is that those four cells there cannot all be shaded cells, can they? Because that would be a two by two of shadedness. And that's very naughty and we mustn't do it. So there must be an unshaded cell in that two by two. And yet there must be at least five shaded cells to make the total work. So we can immediately say that those two are shaded. Three Three of these four cells are shaded. All right, I see. Now, now this is lovely. This is absolutely lovely. Is it those three that are shaded? Well, no, because that's going to make that unshaded, and that unshaded cell will never connect to the rest of the shade and the unshaded cells in the grid. It's isolated, so this can never be. But what would what would what happens if we switch these around and make this one? shaded and that one unshaded. Well, that's still the same problem. This green is isolated. If it's this one, that green will be isolated. So in fact, the only cell in this two by two that can possibly be unshaded is the, this one. So we're going to get an exact pattern here. And it has to be a one, doesn't it? It's got to be a one because the maximum I can make the other five cells up to is minus 35. So oh, this is very clever. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so two, three, and four into those cells. Right, minus 10 here. Well, that's got to be two shaded cells because I can't put minus 11 into one of these and one into the other one. That won't work. So those two have got to be grey, which, right, and now avoid a two by two, so that one's got to be green. Green, green, oh, this, this is so weird. Green, unshaded cells are positive, aren't they? So this is a positive number in a positive cage. But those two cells can't both be positive as well. Yeah, I'm just thinking about yeah, okay, this domino has an interesting property. And the property is that it's neither fully shaded or fully unshaded. If it was fully grey, these greens would be isolated from the rest of the grid. If it was fully green, we'd have a green two by two. So this is one of each, which means one of these cells is counting negatively towards the total of 22 which means that the other digit, oh, this is forced. This is absolutely forced. Yeah, because let's make the shaded cell that must exist in this domino, let's make that the lowest it can possibly be, which is a two. Well, that means the other four cells in this cage have to sum up to 24 but they will be the digits three and four, because this is a two, three, four triple, and we've put the two into a gray cell, and three and four leave behind, if you like, 17 more that we're going to need. And we can't make these two cells add up to more than 17 because we can't repeat a digit in a cage. So they must be an eight, nine pair, and they must be green. I've got it right this time. That's got to be green. Ah, ha ha ha, now avoid a checkerboard. If this is grey, I've got a checkerboard there, and we've just said we can't do that, so that's got to be green. Avoid a two by two. Oh, this is so beautiful, isn't it? And the best thing about it so far is it's not monstrous. They're probably famous last words. Now that's got to be a two. We know that because we have to make these add up to the maximum we can. So, <laughs> oh no, no, 
Oh, yes. No. Oh, ah, I don't know what I'm saying. I was about to say, now, is it possible for this six cage to be a one, two, three uh, cage? And then I thought, oh, no, because it would create a two by two. But then I've realized that it's a positive six, which would be green. So those three digits could be a one, two, three triple, maybe. Mm, can we rule that out? And they'd be green. Oh, and then we'd have green here and grey here. In the um, no, okay, sorry, I'm not seeing how to do that at all. This is minus ten, so it's right. So it's either oh, it's just it's just ordinary from now on. We can think of it in an ordinary way. Now we've coloured it. It's either one nine two eight three seven or four six. Um, the zero cage. Can we do anything with that? No, I don't think so. After it gets lower and lower. Um, in fact, I saw when I got home that um, Top Gun Maverick is now available uh, on Sky Store or something. So in lieu of going to the cinema, I'm very tempted to watch that and see if it stars our very own Maverick at some point during it. So, ah. Yes, OK, that's green. This is entirely green. Remember, green is the positive colour. So if there was a negative in one of these cells, let's say it was a negative one, which is the least it could be, the other two cells would then have to add up to 18, which would require double nine in the box, which is going to break the rules of Sudoku. So this is entirely green. So if that was green, all of this would be green. Oh, no, hang on. Green is positive, so is that... Ooh, hang on a minute, there's something wrong here. I don't think, if that's green, then I've got to make these green. So these, green is positive, so these would, no, this doesn't, this doesn't work at all. Um, what I'm thinking is, if these are both green, Let's make them as low as we can. That would be a one and a two. So they would add up to three, which requires these to be negative 23 in two digits. That won't work. So in fact, one of these at least is gray. And if that's true, yeah, okay. One of these at least is gray. And remember what we said about contiguous regions in the perimeter. Whichever one of these is grey, or possibly they're both grey, but it, it, I don't think it really matters. Whichever one of these is grey, or if they're both grey, it's got to connect here by, um, by the medium of greyness around the perimeter. So all of, I think this one as well, but certainly all of those have to be grey. That has to be green to avoid a two by two. Gray, gray is neg. Ah, no, no, this is fine. Gray is negative. So these two digits now have to be absolutely minimized because at the minimum they can be as a one, two pair, which requires this cell to add up to nine because it's got, we've got to get six overall, these two counting as minus three. So that's nine. This is eight. That's nine but, um, because we've just got, we can't repeat digits in a cage. So when we get this one, we can do this one. Um, this is not nine. This is not nine by Sudoku. One and two have to be in this cage. Oh yeah, and I wanted to think about this digit, didn't I? Because remember what we said. We can only have two contiguous regions in the perimeter. So if this cell is green, Oh, hang on. No, all I all I've proved, all I th was thinking about before is they can't both be green. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So if this was green, this would have to be grey. And now, how do I connect the, this green to this green without isolating this grey? I can't. Yeah. So this is definitely grey as well. But this could also possibly be grey. Although, if that's green, both of these have to be green. And then haven't I got the same problem again? 
because the minimum these could be would be a 1-2 pair, which would require these to add up to 18, which doesn't work. So that, I think, is also grey. And I think, by the same token, this cell is also grey. Because, it, again, if it's green, it's got to connect both these. This would all have to be green, and that's going to put give us the problem. So this is also grey. So now, do I know something about that one? Yeah, yes, yes, we do, because this can, this domino cannot be entirely. We, we're, we're heading towards minus eight, which is grey. Basically, it's it's going to have big greyness associated with it. Now, if both of its cells were grey, we'd have a two by two of grey. So it can't be that. So one of its cells is grey. But the important thing is one of its cells is counting positively towards a minus eight total. So this has to be nine and one. And we know the order with this being grey, this being green, which we would have known anyway to avoid a two by two, I suppose. This cell is not a one. Nine by Sudoku is in one of those two cells. Um, the 20 cage has a one and a two in it. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, the 20 cage is totally forced. Forget, forget negativity. How do you make a 20 cage ever in Sudoku, a four cell 20 cage, if it's got a one and a two in it? The only way is if the other two digits are eight and nine and all the digits are adding up to this. In the, or they're all going the same way. They all have to have the same um, positivity, should we say, or negativity, which means this has got to be entirely the same color, which means those two have to be gray. This is huge now. Oh, no, this is, this is massive because now eight. This is a one, two, eight, nine quadruple. Eight has to go here. Two has to go here because this is a one, two, nine. Sorry, it's a one, two, eight, nine. So this square here is either one, two or nine. It's looking at a one, nine pair. So these squares here have got to be a one, nine pair. But more than that, look at this green. This green has to get out and meet some friends. So let's enable it to do that. This green has to get out and meet some friends. Let's enable it to do that. Well, oh, we know the color of this one, of course. This has to be the opposite color to the negativity. So that's green. Ah, now this 16 cage is a positive cage, but can't have eights and nines in it. So the maximum amount two green digits could add to in this cage would be seven and six is 13. So it can't have any negative digits in it. So both of those are green, which means this is gray to avoid a two by two. This gray needs to meet some friends. So that that turns gray. Ah, oh, this is just quality. It's just quality. Uh, one and nine, so there's a nine, no nine in this cell. So we've almost got the position of the nine locked down in box one. That square's not an eight. These squares are from five, six, and seven. And this 16 cage, I think, is still under pressure because it can't have eight and nine in it. So I think it's probably, well, it has got to have seven in it because otherwise it would be six plus five plus four, which is only 15. So that's not a seven. So there's definitely a seven in here. If there was no six, it could be seven, five, four, probably. So maybe we don't know more than that. Um, Okie dokie. So where do we look now? Hmm. 15 cage has got a gray in it, but both of those can't be gray. Yeah, okay, I can believe this 15 cage is under pressure because, because we can't put eight or nine in it, but we also can't make it entirely gray because if these two are gray, we've got a two by two. 
So what about if both of those are green? No, that both of those can't be green because in fact, well, they couldn't have even been green without the one there. This would have been a minimum of a one, two pair and these would have had to be double nine again. So there is exactly one green digit in this sequence. It must be a green digit that avoids a two by two in this one. So that has to be gray. And the, these two squares are therefore one of each. They're one gray and one green. They're one gray and one green. So if we had seven, six, five in here, then the green digit would be a three. I think it's a similar thing to up here. I think we've got to have, well, we've certainly got to have seven in here. If we didn't have six, it would be seven, five, four. And we'd have to put one as the other digit, which we couldn't have. So there is a six in here as well. So it's either seven, six, five with a three being green or it's seven, six, four with a two being green. Um, Hmm. I don't know if I can do that though. I've got to avoid a checkerboard here. Is that relevant? Don't think so. I've got this zero cage to deal with. Oh, I've got to avoid a checkerboard there. Didn't spot that. Look, if this was gray, that would be a checkerboard. So that's green. That's, oh, and look, there's loads of this I've missed. Look, that's got to be grey to avoid a two by two of green. Um, so that means that, I don't know what that means. Oh, look, the 10 cage is now not one nine or two eight. So this is three, seven or four, six. The zero cage has got two positive numbers in it. So can it have, do those both have to be negative or can one of them be, can one of them be negative and one of them be positive? And then we'd have three positives adding to the negative. which we could just do, I think, if this is a one. If this is a one and is green, then this could be a, oh, it can't, no, it can't be a six or a seven. Ah. I mean, there's something going on with this zero cage, I think. Ah, ah, right. Okay, here is the beautiful way. Here is the beautiful way of seeing how, how this zero cage works in the world. What color is that digit? That is absolutely beautiful. So the question to ask here is how could this be green? If this is green, we know this must be gray because Otherwise, our equation won't work. We need to have an equilibrium between greens and greys in the box. So if this is green, we know this is grey. But now, none of the greens can be a one. This one sees them all. So this would be a minimum of a two, three and a four, which would add up to nine. And we can't put nine in there. So that cell is not possible. It's not possible for this to be green. That's got to be grey. And if this is grey, that cell's got to be green by the power of two by two-ness. Now we know that there's only one green in this sequence, so that's got to be gray. This green has got to get out, so that's green. That avoided two by two there, that's gray. This cell, oh, this is so clever. Right, remember what we said about how this minus 15 was made up? That the green digit was a two or a three. Well, it now can't be a two, so it's a three. And that means that the rest of the digits have to be maxed out, if I remember correctly, in order to 
make the total work. So there we've got 18 minus 3 is in, well, we've got 3 minus 18, which is in fact minus 15, which is what we need. These two squares are now a 2, 4 pair by Sudoku. Um, so now, what's that one? That one can't be green now. Because if this is green, we've got three greens adding up to a maximum of four, and that's just silly. So that's got to be grey. Now we've got to avoid a checkerboard there, so that's got to be grey. Now we've got to avoid a two by two here, so that's got to be green. Now we've got to avoid a checkerboard, so that's got to be green. Now we've got two. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, it's right. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> it's comedy. It's comedy. Because, look. Those two squares are the wrong way round in the sense that they're positive in a negative cage. So this has got to be as mighty as it can be in order to make things work. Um, and it can't be an eight or a nine. So it's got to be seven. And this has got to be kept down to a minimum. So if this is positive one, to, so this is positive one, positive two. So we're at plus three and we've got to get to minus four. That's the only way this can possibly work. So that has to be gray. Avoid a checkerboard, so that's got to be grey. Avoid a two by two, that's got to be green. Get the green out of its cul-de-sac, that's got to be green. Oh, one, two pairs. This is four, this is two. Ah, I still don't know what my ten cage is, I don't think. Um, let me think about this now. Have we... Have we done some magic that's going to allow us to do more things or not? I suppose from the zero cages perspective, we now need this digit to be two lower than this digit. Which is possibly interesting. Oh, where does seven go? In box six, it's got to go there. So those have got to be a five, six pair. Seven is plonked into my ten cage, so that's a three seven pair. Three is in one of those two squares. Can three be here? If that's three, that's got to be five. Yes, possibly that works. Um, these digits are from four, five and six. Let's put that in and have a look. No, we can't put four. I can't repeat four in the zero cage. So can that be six is the question. No, because if that's a six, that's got to be a four to make the uh, to reach equilibrium. We'd have two fours in the cage and in row five. So that is five. That's therefore three. These squares are a four, six pair. That cell is not a five. Um, but a one, two pair in column four, I've just noticed. I've got, what else have we got here? Um, I don't know, five, six, and eight. Oh, this square's a naked single, the central cell of the grid. It can't be five or six, so it must be an eight. Which is maybe interesting. So these squares are from one, two, and nine, which might be important. Um, these squares are a 5-6 pair by Sudoku, which again feels like there's a 2 here in fact, so that's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 2, that's a 1, 2 comes out of these squares, which means we can get rid of the corner pencil mark 9, we've got a 1-9 pair here, we need 2, 4 and 8 into those squares, and that can't be a 2, and I want, I, want to, I want to say this has to be a five because I'm looking at this four six pair and it's because it's the same color it makes me think it's in the same region but I think that's just not right oh where does three go in box two it's got to go there and that fixes the 16 cage because it needs 13 more and it can't have four nine or five eight so that's a six or a seven so that is a five which, um, but it's five logically rather than by nonsense, which was the way my brain was trying to do it. That's a four in the corner. Uh, there's a five here, so that is not a five. 
Can we do anything better than that? Ah, no. Okay, so how do we... How do we make more progress now? Is it going to be yin-yang maybe? Where is the yin-yang trick we need to spot? I have not got a clue. This box seems incredibly empty, doesn't it? I don't like the fact that that top, those six cells there have nothing in them other than some fairly useless looking shading. Now we've, we've discerned how this works. The 13 cage, it's got, it's got a two in it. Okay, it's got a two in it. Does that mean, what does that mean? Do we know something about its makeup? Well, one thing we know, actually thinking about it, is we know the color of this digit, don't we? Because these digits cannot add up to 13, even if I made them 4 and 8. So we're going to have to require a positive contribution from this cell, which means that cell is green. Ah, right. And that's interesting, because now it's not possible for both of these to be. Oh, this is lovely. It's really lovely. If these were now both green, the puzzle's broken. Because remember, we need contiguous colours on the perimeter. So once this becomes green, I've got to connect this green to here along the perimeter, and I'm going to get a two by two. That's beautiful. If that's intended, that is really clever. So, so now we know that this is one of these situations where one of these is green and one of these is grey. Because we've got a positive here, but it can't be, I mean, even if it's a nine, it's not enough to get to 13. So one of these must be green, but both of them can't be. So, yeah, so in fact the two, we now know that the two is the grey digit. Because if the 2 was the positive digit, even if we had 9 to that, we don't get to 13. So there is a 2 negative, and then 2 digits that must add up to 15 to correct the count. Now that means that there's no 4 in this cage, because you can't put 11 in there. This is so brilliant. It's just brilliant. So that's 4, that's 4, that's 3. And that must be a 7, because we must add 7 to 8 in order to correct the count. So this is a se ah, this is a seven. This is a three. Now where does seven go in that quintuple? Well, it can only go there, I think. That corrects this to being a six. Six and five go in. That must be five. This is all getting. It's done. Box one is done because of this nine. That's completely forced. And this eight is done. Eight two. Si oh, this is just. It's just stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Three six eight go here. So that's not eight, that's not three. That one, unfortunately, I think has options. These cells have got to be four, five, and seven, I think. So that can't be seven, that can't be four. Uh, I'm probably missing some very straightforward Sudoku to disambiguate this, but I can't see how to do that. What about this four, six pair? Is that done? This one, nine pair? I know this is one of each colour. Does that somehow matter? Or can we do... This is one of each colour. Ah! Oh no, then no. Oh, I was about to say, but we know that one can't be green. But actually, I know no such thing now. Because if this was grey and this was green, then connecting this round the corner wouldn't create a 2x2 two two here. So that would that would be fine. Okay, so now I'm actually properly stuck. How do we... How am I meant to understand this? One of each here. In fact, if that was green, well, yeah, that would have to be green for many reasons, including avoiding a checkerboard as well as the perimeter logic. Um, what would happen if... He says, trying desperately to spot something that's going to help me here. Um, 
I don't know. I'm actually totally discombobulated. It was going. It went so well for a moment or two, didn't it? Minus 23 seems very nebulous for this F pentomino here. Is there some sort of Sudoku we can do? Uh, these two squares have got to be a 2 and a 9. These squares have got to be 1, 3 and 4. These squares have got to be the other digits, which are 5, 6 and 8. Okay, that's great. Um, what about if that's grey? That would have to join up to its friends here. So these would become grey. These would become green. That would become grey. Is there anything wrong with that? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> if, on the other hand, have we got... Right, okay, let's take stock. What could it be? It could be avoiding two by twos. Is there some somewhere I need to avoid a two by two? Probably. I need to avoid a two by two here. Can both of these be green? I don't see why not. Okay, so that's probably not where we're meant to look. Where is it going to be then? It must be something to do with the 17k. Oh, okay. Well, the 17 cage hasn't got eight and seven in it. So it must have nine in it because otherwise it would be a maximum of 15 with a 654. Right, there's a nine in there. So that's, that's a one, that's a nine. So that means this, it needs two more digits that add up to eight. Okay, where's two in this column? And the answer I think is down there. So this is nine, two, six, exactly. Which means this digit is five, this digit is six, this digit is four, and this digit is three. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. So that this is going to finish all of, well, maybe it doesn't finish that, but it finishes a lot that's going on in the top of the grid. Although, okay, I'm now one worried about, hmm. Or maybe it's the idea if I can if I can persuade myself something on this left hand side is green. Maybe that's the point, because then I can connect that round the corner. Anything over here that's green must connect to here and be green. Yes, that's not a silly thought. That is not a silly thought. So is there a reason why? Oh, I know what it is. It's really simple, of course. I haven't filled in the colours here. <laughs> so that's green. That's grey. Oh, it doesn't give me my green on the perimeter. It does mean this is grey, though, because this grey must connect. So that's got to be grey. Avoid a 2x2, two two, that's got to be green. That's got to be grey to avoid a 2x2. Two two. Oh, it's just me being an absolute uh, imbecile, wasn't it? But I still haven't got my green on the perimeter here I was hoping to get. Um, in fact, what has that given me? It's given me a 4, a negative 4 in my 20, well, I, yeah, okay, that's fine. I would have expected a negative 4 in the 23 cage, because anything positive here is going to make, oh, I can't actually have, ev ah, okay, so maybe it is this F pentomino, because those two can't both be grey without creating a two by two of greyness. Can they both be green? If they were both green, there'd be a minimum of five plus three, which is eight. No, they can't, obviously, they can't both be green because if these added up to eight and that's the least they would add up to, these digits would have to add up to 31 and there's only three of them and they have to be different. So that's complete nonsense. So one of these is green and one of these is gray. I don't really have a good way of, maybe I'll purple them or something. So this is one of each. Now the minimum then is a, th so the minimum digit that I can make green in this pair would be a three here. So if this was a green three, 
these digits would have to add up to 26, and that's a 4. So that is actually possible, isn't it? But what if that if that was the green digit? It would be a five, and that looks much harder, because then all no that doesn't work straight away. Ah, so we can colour these. This is the point. If this is uh, if this is the green digit and this is the grey digit, like this, because the minimum I could make this digit is a five. These greys. Oh no, that might work. Sorry, I was doing my maths wrong. Sorry, no, I think I'm wrong with my maths. This could work. I was thinking there were only three digits to do it, but there aren't, there are four, so this might work fine. So if that's a five, now these have to add up to 28, but that's a four. No, this, no, it still doesn't work, actually. It still doesn't work. I've now, right, I've gone round the houses on this and this is still broken. Because the, making these add up to 28 requires these to add up to 24. And this cell can be neither 7, 8 or 9. So it's impossible to do it. So this is not the green digit. This is great. This is great. So this is the grey digit. This is the green digit. So uh, I don't know. I don't think we know what quantum that is. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. And that's at least a three. Um, and if it's not a three, it's got to be a five. Ah, it's still problematic. It's still difficult, this. Because if this is not a three, it can't be a one or a two. If it's not a three, it can't be a four. So it would have to be a minimum of five. And if it's a five, again, these have to be, this, this would have to be a seven, eight, nine triple. And it simply cannot be. It cannot be big enough. Nine, it's got 23 as the maximum, not 24. So this is not five, this must be three. Which means these have to add up to 26. Once we dot knock the four off, these have to add up to 22. And the only way that's gonna work is if this is nine and this is a five eight pair, that's very clever, good grief. And everything is gray, obviously. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Look what this has done. This graying here has isolated the green and the top of the grid. That green needs to connect to its friends. Or well, how does it do it? It's going to have to come there. Once it comes here, this is what we were looking for. It's got to whiz around the perimeter and come there. So that means this grey has got to get out. And somehow I think this 10 cage is going to do disambiguate the whole of the rest of the grid, which is slightly disturbing as to how it's going to achieve all of that. But that being a nine gives me a two here. This being a five, eight gives me a six here. That means that's a nine in the corner. Oh, I've noticed I missed the song. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Someone, by the way, sent me a message saying that they'd heard someone singing that version of the lyrics in a tube station in London, which I was tickled pink by. I, I still have never met anybody outside my family or friends who has heard of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs> um, Mark says he gets recognised all the time, but that's probably on account of his Bridget Jones diary starring role. Um, four, five, this is four, five, ah, four, five and six here, but that one can't be six. So do we somehow know how this, this is a positive, ah, yes, we do, right. This is a positive total and it's a 10. So it's got to have at least two big digits in it. It can, it can not only have one positive digit in it. Now, that means, how does this grey connect to its friends? If it's going to try and come through here or there, it's going to take too many cells from the 10 cage and turn them negative. So it must go there. Ah, this is, this is more beautiful logic, actually. I've understood this now. Right, 
Now let's think about the 10 cage again, because we know it's got two green digits in it. It must have. It can't have three green digits, because if all of those are green, I've got two by twos all over the bottom of the grid. So there must be exactly two green digits in here. Now, where are we going to put the grey digit in that sequence? If we put the grey digit here, these two are green and that creates a problem, a two by two. If that's the grey digit, these two are green and that creates the problem. So the only way of getting out of the problem is to put the grey in the middle. So that's the grey, these two are green, this grey needs to get out and that... So we've now done the yin-yang. We've done the yin-yang, we know that digit now is probably a one, isn't it? Because if it's not a one, it's going to get big and that's going to make this total hard to hard to reach. So if that's a one, these two squares have to add up to 11, which means we need seven, five or six here, which we cannot have, so that's not a one. So it's got to be a four, maybe. If it's a four, these have to... Oh, this is it. Right, this is a four, because if it's not a four, there's no way of making these two squares add up to 15. If, if this was a 5, it can't even be a 5. It would have, then have to be a 6, which means these two would have to add up to 16, which it, they definitely can't do given the 9 in the row. So this has to be 4. These have to add up to 14 without using 9, which means they have to be 6 and 8, which has to be this way round, which gives me the 6 and the 4 here. Um which means that's a five, I suppose. This is an eight, this is a five. This is a six, this is a two. Come on, keep going now. This is not a four. We need one, three, and seven into these cells. That is a naked single, that's a seven. This is a one or a three. The seven does the seven and the five in the column. The five is forced here by Sudoku. Um, this square's got to be a 1 or a 3. These squares have got to be 4 and 8, which we can do. 8 and 4 and 1 and 3 and 4 all go in. The 3 here does the 1 and the 3. I think we're there. This is 1 and 7, which we can do. Which is, gives us the 1 and the 9 and the 9 and the 2. Wow. That is an absolutely stunning puzzle. I'm just going to stare at it before I click tick, if you don't mind. I just want to think about whether or not we've got any two by twos in gray or green. I'm not seeing anything. Um, so I think that might be correct. Yay. I love that. Agent, take a bow. What a puzzle to celebrate five years of Sudoku on Cracking the Cryptic. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Something utterly, utterly brilliant and a lot of fun to solve. I hope you had a go. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.